Hello everyone, and to see you a here. Name's Randy. Um, I'm gonna try to walk through installing SDR radio. Um, <clears throat> have the links up here. That was a little hard to find actually. I guess there's an SDR-radio.com and a V2. SDR-radio.com, not to be confused with each other. So. Weird. The other site doesn't even look anything like this, actually. Now, what is the software? I don't think. But anyway, <clears throat> not so sure how that all works. Anyway, this is where I got it from. Um, down here, you've got where it says which build. This is the latest build. I had trouble downloading that. The link kept not working for me. Um, I'm not even sure how I eventually actually got it to work. Maybe the server's having problems. Um, not sure. Anyway, downloaded. So. I'm going to try to do this from scratch just to <clears throat> make it easier. The files you need, um, from what I remember from the past here, it's been a while since I've done it, but I believe this is correct. You need these um, SADI.exe drivers for the USB port for the um, SDR radio uh, USB dongle. And this is the latest version of the program. Hopefully, it's intact. And then this is the uh, some other drivers for the software. Evidently, for some reason, they're different. And in that folder, I'll show you how to get those in a minute. In that folder, there's a 32-bit or 64-bit version, depending on which operating system you're running. And so you take those files, again, depending on which version of Windows, <coughs> and um, go down to the program files. And you find the SDR radio pro directory. And you just copy them in there. That's all you have to do with those. Not a big deal. Um, let's go to where you get those, I guess, here. I've got that on a different screen. Same website, just a different page. Oh, look, there it is. Popping up to want to save it again. It was taking forever. It's just really something up with that server for some reason. I tried it on two computers here, too. So I know it's not just this particular computer that was giving me grief or this instance of. Internet Explorer, in fact, they even rebooted and did something. <clears throat> so anyway, um, I believe on the main page first there was, uh, oh yeah, right here, RTR dongles. I click that link, I believe, and then that took me over to this page, which has um, all the different RTLs, blah, 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 blahs. Down in here, buried in the freaking text, is right here it says Michael AA5SH and Henk PD5DP ham radio operators have them on their pages and these links should be color blue and they're not it's very annoying anyway um, you can click on their page and go find the drivers download them when you do they'll be and you, uh, and you look at the zip file it'll be um, this zip file when you open it up Depending on our break system, again, you have those files and you just have to work. I believe the files are the same set in both. It's just one's a 32 bit version, one is a 64 bit version. <clears throat> Other than that, they are one in the same. So, oops, went back one too many. Let's go walk through the, um, most of the install first, now we'll do the USB. Now the USB. I don't think it really matters, but I think I'm going to anyway. So you run that. It's not really an installable, it just opens up a program. Okay, um, what you have to do is make sure, one, that your dongle, the RTL USB dongle is plugged into your PC, so it'll see it. And then um, in this piece of software here, click on Options, List All Devices, and when you pull this down, you'll see all the different devices that are on your computer. You want to look for Bulk In Interface 0 and Bulk In Interface 1, and you want to highlight one of those. And then click install driver. And when it finishes installing it, click on the other one, and click install driver, and it'll finish installing it, hopefully successfully. And then um, that'll take care of that. So you can close that window out when you're done. Then install the SDR radio software. And I think this is pretty straightforward, other than unless you want to change. You know options, <clears throat> what icons you want to see, and uh, whether or not just for you or other people depends on what Windows version you have. Probably as well, you get those options. 
Um, and what folder it goes in, I've got the default folder directory, it's fine. And it says on his site you do not have to uninstall the old version when you're installing a new version. This is saying stop and service because I have the uh, SDR server running. The SDR server is a nice feature. I think I did a video on that already where you can, somebody somewhere else across the internet can connect to your dongle through the uh, SDR server software. It's kind of cool. All right, here, let it finish up. It says completed. My icons kind of went bonkers there for a second. There we go. I'll do next. Okay, finished. I don't want to start the console now. And then you take these files, and if they're already in there, I'm not going to do it, but I'm going to just, just in case, it wrote over. I don't know if it did or not. Copy. I right click, by the way. Copy. <coughs> and go to the program. Uh, well, I was already in that folder, wasn't I? This folder here. I believe they're already in there. Let's just see what it says. I'm kind of curious now. For whether or not they're old or new ones. See, we got. Um, Copy and replace. Yeah, I see. And I'm just not going to really bother. But they're the same files. I think there's different dates on but the sizes of them are the same. And the same version on that one. I just wanted to make sure they were still in there. So they're still in that directory, so that should be good to go. We'll find out, won't we? <laughs> and I believe. That should be it. Let me fire it up and see if it comes up. The splash screen comes up on my other monitor, so you're not going to see it. It does say build 1315, which is the new version. Now, I had problems with this a minute ago with it wanting to see the dongle right away, so I'm going to put it on pause this time if it does it, and hopefully it'll come up here in a minute. We'll have to give it a try. Oh, yeah, see, right? I can't point to it, but it says radio and then select a radio definition. That's what I wanted to do, but it seems to uh, give me grief for whatever reason. So here we go. Oh, it came up right away. You gotta love that. <clears throat> All right, this would not normally be in here. This line right here. So what you would do, I believe, is click definitions, then add. Oh no, I take the back. Search. You have to find yours, and then it searches around and looks, and, oh, I found one. I'm going to update the list, and you say yes, and it puts that in there. <clears throat> and you check this box here to enable it, because it says enable right above it. And you do that, and you say okay. I think when you do add, just so you know, I think when you do add, it's when you're adding other types of definitions, receivers, stuff that, you know, aren't in here and don't count. So we don't do anything with them, so it doesn't matter. So it's not add, it's just search, and it finds it on and again, when you do search, you have to do RTL, SDR, USB. That's the one you're looking for. I mean, unless you're working with one of one of these other ones, but this is the one we're doing right now, the, uh, the USB dongles. And uh, that's about it. Oh, and over here, my son's kind of acted up for him. His frequency range was kind of screwed up on his, and it only said like 0 to 50. I don't know why I did that. Mine has the right frequency range. But um, what we did to fix that for him is you just highlight it, click edit and uh, there's a frequency range on here so you can edit this you, you can't edit it to go outside the range of the dongle you know but we, he tried just for fun playing around with it but it don't really do you any good it just does weird stuff you know I mean you keep it within the range where it's supposed to be but the ones we're using it's a um, what is it a R820 I believe this uh, model we have in ours so Hopefully that'll come up right to begin with. But if it don't, just find out what the range is of yours and enter the numbers in here at their pull down screen. So it's easy enough to do. It's not really difficult. Okay, so you got that in there. You have that in there. You make sure that it's checked so it says enable. And click OK. And then highlight it. And then you can click start. And hopefully it'll start. Find out. Which takes a second. Do, 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 do. Okay, it only doesn't take quite that long. The other version of software I use is SDR Sharp. And um, this has more bells and whistles in it. But uh, as you can see, it doesn't always like to start up properly. 
it has taken a while before to start. And then there's other times when it just fires right up. So don't really know what the deal is with that. <clears throat> but anyway, that's how you start it. Every time you come into the software, you have to restart. You have to click on the radio and then go in there and highlight it and click start to start it, I believe. Um, and I'm not going to get into all the how you do what on this thing. I was hoping it would pop up here while we were talking. Um, I will tell you one thing, though. You'll notice this on both programs. If you click uh, on FM, if you click like broadcast wider or whatever, it changes this, how wide the bandwidth is over here. But it's setting it, which is nice. Um, but you can still, I thought you could drag those. Um, that's what I get for thinking. I guess it's only an SDR sharp where you can drag these. Oh, there you go. You can drag them in and out. And um, it doesn't do you any good to put this on, say, broadcast. And then change it in here and, and mess with it. Or um, what was it? I guess what I'm saying is this, uh, the broadcast wide and narrow, it seems like it's kind of setting up the, well, my, my analogy is a discriminator bandwidth kind of a thing. And um, so you can match this to how wide or narrow the uh, transmission is that you're trying to receive, but you still might have to adjust this a little bit to get it into where it falls into the waterfall. And again, it's, it's not coming up, so I'm going to go ahead and crash it, or not crash it, but just kill the program. Um, Actually, let's see if it'll. I want to mind trying to start it one more time. We have a little bit of time here. And if that don't work, we'll call it. We'll call it a day, and we'll just have to try it. I mean, the installation was the main goal there, so and I believe that we did that properly. Like I said, it just seems to act up on this. Computer a little bit. <clears throat> okay. yeah, at least that comes up right away. Oh, by the way, too, um, I set this, I think by default it was up here higher, like 3 megahertz or something. Now, is it mine to 1? The higher that is, and the more spectrum of bandwidth it has to look at, the frequency span, I think it's just tougher on the, on the computer. And um, it can make, especially if you're listening to FM broadcast on here, it just makes it really lag and break up and just do weird stuff. And so one megahertz is more than enough, really, unless you want it to be using it as a spectrum analyzer or something. So I'm going to try this one more time. But don't work. I'm going to fire up SDR Sharp really quickly just for you to see it. Because this ain't really a video on SDR Sharp. Alright, still nothing. Sorry about that, folks. That's kind of the way it is. I'm going to have to move that around. Give me a second here. <laughs> it's too big. All right. This is SDR Sharp, by the way. This person can probably read that. Um, it's already set up for this um, RTL SDR slash USB. <clears throat> it's on an FM radio station. And uh, hit play. If mind you, I have had just about enough. Sorry, that was probably loud. To That's why now anyway, is the perfect time for a visit to this I actually, in a lot of ways, I like better. It's simpler. Um, you know, but the other one does a lot more. It's just this one seems to work more reliably. What can I say? <clears throat> well, anyway, that is that. As they say, I'll come upon 15 minutes. Hopefully that was educational and you'll be able to install SDR radio properly. Just go through those steps. Just remember to you know, download the software, install it, 
get through the Zadig, Zadig USB drivers and then load those DLLs that I showed you into that um, folder for the SDR Radio Pro and fire it up and uh, it should work for you. I actually have had more trouble with it recently than I have in the past when I originally started using it. It, it fired up right away so I'm not sure what's going on with that but uh, I'm sure you'll you'll find it to work just fine for you probably a, a computer or something issue here, a driver or whatever. So take care and to CUA, Randy saying 73 saying 73 for now. Somebody said he can't say 73, I have to say 73. Not sure which one it was, but they said this sounds like a CB or I never knew that. Don't care either, but just thought I'd try to <laughs> do it the right way. Take care, everyone.